there is a sword that is endowed with tremendous power. Only the demon's bride can see this sword, and when it finally happens, the immortal will be allowed to retire. This legend is told to the young customer by an old Korean woman, but the girl only laughs, considering it all to be nothing more than a sad fiction. She is more interested in the turquoise ring buried in the trash. The customer says goodbye to the sweet old woman, but the latter grabs her by the sleeve and gives her one last piece of advice, to make your deepest wish at the moment of life and death. 1968. A young man approaches the porch of a house from which a teenager runs out into the street. Stopping the boy, the gentleman asks him not to run away from the house, or he will never see his mother again. The boy does not understand how the stranger knows all this, but he tries to explain that it is all about his stern father. To this the gentleman replies that he has done the tyrant little harm for it, at which point the old man falls down the stairs. After shoving lunch in the boy's hand and naming the right answer to the school test, the stranger leaves. Once upon a time in Goryeo's time, this same stranger was the emperor's best sword-wielding warrior. Kim Shin was loyal to the palace, but one day the general was accused of treason, and the young emperor asked him to surrender as a traitor, promising to lay hundreds of peaceful people at the warrior's feet otherwise. Realizing that his sweetheart would suffer the king's wrath, the general nevertheless did not go along with the madman and challenged him to a fight. At one point, the warrior is brought to his knees, stripped of his legs, and he asked his mentor to enforce the sentence, lest this be done by his hated enemies. The old man complies with the order, drenched in tears, and he too is destroyed by the emperor's guards. His majesty does not allow anyone to take the general's body and orders him to be thrown into a field. In his last breath, Kim Shin turns his head to the princess, memorizing her thin fingers with a neat turquoise ring. Kim Shin waits for his soul to leave his body, lying in the wildflowers. Seoul, 1998. A Korean driver on the road crashes into a guy who doesn't even fall down. Trying to deal with the intruder, the driver gets out of the wrecked car and is hypnotized by a strange type who convinces him that it was only a boar. A crowd of onlookers gathers around, but they are more shocked not by the accident itself, but by the body of the woman in the trunk of the wrecked car. One of the people in the crowd is even more surprised. She recognizes herself in the girl. The shocked girl is approached by the very guy who stopped the car. The angel of death takes the girl from her place and leads her to the tea house where she must drink a strange beverage. In just a few minutes, the cup from which the girl drank goes on the shelf to a million other cups like it. In the same city, at the same time, General Kim Shin is walking down the street. Meeting the angel of death, the warrior recognizes him as an old acquaintance who he is not very happy to meet. On the other hand, the old man, whose house Kim Shin came to, is very happy to see the immortal general. He brings out a young boy to whom the warrior appears as his future uncle, brother, son, and grandson. The boy doesn't understand what the stranger is talking about, but Kim Shin is not enraged by his impertinence. On the contrary, looking at his new friend, the general goes back to the day he ended his life in the field. His old servant and his grandson came to say goodbye to his body, but suddenly the general stood up. The sword still pierced his body, and a heavenly voice reported that the warrior can only rest in peace when the demon's bride finds the sword. Until then, Kim Shin remains immortal. Back at the palace, Kim Shin punished his abusers, but at that time his servant left this world, leaving his little grandson alone. The boy tells the immortal that the old man willed him to serve the general, and he swears to be faithful to him always. Once on the ship, the friends set out on their journey, sharing equally the meager food supplies. Kim Shin tries his best to make the young man quickly forget his sorrows, but warm feelings of the boy did not arouse everybody. Having grabbed the boy, sailors hung him overboard promising to sell him into slavery, and then they threw him into the water intending to deal with the stranger in the same manner. Kim Shin didn't lay a finger on the thieves, but he caused such a storm that several dozen sailors went underwater with the ship. The immortal remembers all this while sitting on the roof of a skyscraper these days. His attention is suddenly drawn to the sound of screeching brakes, and the guy sees an injured girl being thrown out of a car on a vacant lot. Kim Shin prefers not to get involved in other people's problems, but the girl's voice begging for rescue doesn't let him sit still, and the demon flies down. Despite the rule don't decide who lives and who dies, the general brings the dead girl back to life and disappears. A little later, the angel of death arrives at the scene of the tragedy, but instead of the victim he sees only a red stain. After consulting the clock and the prophecy, the hero understands what it all means. At that moment, somewhere, a girl with the mark of the demon's bride was born. Eight years later, for her ninth birthday, Young Ji Yun Tak is getting ready. Walking with her mother on the beach, the girl suddenly notices a puppy, and while she strokes it, the woman looks sadly at her crazy daughter, no puppy by her side. The next day, her mother meets Ian Tak from school, offering to light the candles on the birthday cake. 
Suddenly, the girl's joy vanishes, and looking into her mother's eyes, she realizes that she has only her soul in front of her. The woman herself died in hospital at the moment. Yin Tak's superpower gives her a chance to say goodbye to her mother, and the woman disappears. Untak's mother goes to her old acquaintance, a saleswoman, and asks her to take care of the girl. The girl's departure does not surprise the old woman at all. Meanwhile, the angel of death shows up at the dead woman's house. He is surprised that Yun Tak sees him. The messenger declares that the girl shouldn't have been born at all. Her mother almost died years ago in a wasteland, but someone changed her fate. To Jai Yun Tak's aid comes an old saleswoman. She knows what angel came for, but she won't give him the girl, demanding to see her name on the list. The old woman tells her war that she must now escape, or else the angel of death will return, and that a man and two women who will come to the funeral will help her do so. Ten years pass. A girl of incredible beauty walks along the city sidewalk, gathering admiring glances from passersby. The immortal general's current nephew calls him asking for help getting rid of his creditors at the bar, but the man doesn't even tear himself away from his book. Ji Yun Tak is in her last year of high school, but she hasn't made any friends in that time. After learning that she sees ghosts, her peers shun the demon's bride. On the other hand, the ghosts try to get in touch with her, but Yun Tak pretends not to notice them until the last moment. Yun Tak meets Kim Shin on his way back to school and he suddenly sees her as his destiny. Yun Tak's life has been hard all along, being raised by her aunt who only cares where her sister's savings account went after she left. Even on her niece's birthday, her in-laws do not bend to hurt her and Yun Tak goes off to celebrate alone. The girl comes to the waterfront with a small cake, and as she blows out the candles, she asks for a job and a boyfriend to send her to be less miserable. In a strange way, Kim Shin hears these wishes. He appears at the girl's call with a bouquet of buckwheat, and she recognizes the passerby they recently met by eye. The demon doesn't understand what's going on, but he can't see Yun Tak's future. Upon returning home, Kim Shin sees that his nephew is renting the house without his consent, and not to anyone, but to the angel of death himself. The contract is signed by this moment, so the angel agrees to terminate it only if he takes the kid instead, and to prevent this, the demon agrees to live with a rival under one roof. The two men have a hard road ahead of them, already at their first dinner together, they make intrigues for each other. While doing her homework, Yun Tak considers a gifted buckwheat bouquet and calls out to her lover, not yet imagining what he might be like. And in the morning, encouraged by the prophecies of the stranger on the dock, the girl sets out to find work. Kim Shin shows up out of nowhere again, assuring her girlfriend that she called him herself, but neither of the pair can yet figure out how it works. Finally, after praying, Yun Tak realizes the trick. Every time she wants something badly, a stranger appears. When once again, Jay Yun Tak summons the general, she emotionally grabs his hand and gets burned. After racking her brains, the girl confesses that she has guessed that her new friend is a demon, and she tells him that everyone has called her the demon's bride since childhood. Kim Shin tries to dissuade the girlfriend, and after hurting her badly, he leaves. Except Yun Tak easily follows him through the mystical door through which they enter Canada, and they both realize that the girl really is the demon's bride. Self-confident Jay tells her demon buddy that she agrees to marry him. Dreamy the girl happily runs around town, making Kim Shin blush at times. Yin Tak has never left Korea before, and being in Canada during the Christmas season was something of a surprise to her. But the demon doesn't share her excitement. As she walks around town, Kim Shin asks her friend for just one thing, to be quiet for a while. To piss off the nerd, Yun Tak tries to meet a cute guy, but he turns out to be a ghost and the plan doesn't work. Kim Shin tries to leave her girlfriend in the hotel lobby to work things out. It proves difficult, but still the demon manages to sneak away. The angel of death meets with an assistant and gets a plan from him to find the missing soul. All these years later, he's bothered by the fact that Yun Tak isn't on any list and can't get her, as it was meant to be. A scandalized married couple enters the cafe, seen by no one but the angel of death and his companion. Turning to the couple, the messenger invites them to come with him to the tea room. This time, only the woman receives the magic potion that wipes out all life. Her husband turns out to be guilty of a terrible crime. He is the same driver who threw Yun Tak's dying mother on a wasteland. The man falls to his knees and begs for mercy, but Angel says that's impossible. After these words, he thinks of Kim Shin, the guy who has to live forever, and this is his punishment. Many times the immortal warrior has tried to end his suffering, but each time he is born again, continuing to carry his cross and visiting the cemetery of his past incarnations. The cemetery is where Yun Tak finds him. The cheerful girl greets her mate in his pictures on the monuments, telling them that 200 years later she will be their bride. 
It's time for the couple to return to Korea, and Eun Tak thanks her friend for a wonderful trip. Of course the girl gets a hard time at school for being late, but that's not what hurts her, not even that the teacher doesn't give the girl a hard time, knowing full well her plight. All that warms her soul is the memory of her walk in Canada and her dreams of a future with a demon. Kim Shin asks the angel of death to go with him to check something out, and the demon's hunch is confirmed, the girl hunter sees no door to other realities. Angel is left standing at a loss, at which point the demon's nephew approaches him, entreating him not to say anything about his disappearance to the old man, who is sure to arrive soon. Yen Tak tries her hand at opening doors, hoping she can get to Canada without the demon, but nothing comes of it. The girl ends up in the bathroom, where just at the same time, the beautiful sidewalk girl is doing her beauty routine. When she sees the girl, she hands her a bag of spinach, offering to take it home and treat her family. At home, it's business as usual. The schoolgirl is greeted by disgruntled relatives who promise to beat her up if dinner is not ready soon. Yin Tak makes spinach rolls in a hurry, but she has to leave them behind because her aunt found a brochure from Canada and made another scandal, demanding to find her savings account. In the meantime, the other relatives grab the rolls and they all get sick. After taking the magazine in one roll, the girl leaves to cry on the roof. At this time, Kim Shin tries to figure out why the girl can see through him and can walk through doors with him, yet cannot see the sword as a true demon bride. Curiosity overcomes pride, and Kim Shin finds the girl, lying that she supposedly summoned him again. This time Yun Tak isn't as cheerful as usual, and when asked by her buddy, she confesses that she misses Canada, where she was happy for the first time in years. Yun Tak admits that she has to walk until midnight, she doesn't want to go home while her relatives are awake, and the demon decides to spend that time with her friend. The walking couple is caught by one of the school gossip girls. The girl tries to film it on her phone and distribute it to everyone, but suddenly, a car standing nearby knocks the cell phone out of her hands. There is no one in the car. Yin Tak keeps trying to find a job and she comes across a new ad. This time the job comes to her very easily, and the excited girl calls Kim Shin to share her joy. The demon ends up right next to him with a stake in his mouth, and as he irritably returns home, the angel of death suspects something. The guy's rivalry doesn't stop, and they both hope to survive each other. To that end, the demon pesters his buddy all night long, keeping him awake. To get revenge, Angel gives a concert in the morning, singing songs about the demon's underpants, and it pisses Kim Shin off. The demon decides to pour his heart out to his nephew and reveals to him a terrible family secret about his identity. But it turns out that the boy knew everything since he was six years old and already at eight he had no doubts. Finding out that the teenager has been rude to him all these years, knowing who he really is, Kim Shin goes ballistic, such that the TV broadcasts a storm warning for the city. The cafe where Yun Tak has taken a job has had no customers for months, yet there is a very nice hostess who gives the employee an umbrella. After leaving the waitress on her first day, the hostess goes to see a fortune teller, who promises her an early meeting with a man in a hat. The man in the hat, the angel of death, takes a few more barbs with the demon and goes for a walk. Kim Shin stays home, secretly hoping that Yun Tak will invite him soon. The girl does invite him in, but for some reason it's not Kim Shin who arrives, but the angel of death. The two young men recognize each other, and the schoolgirl becomes very nervous. Kim Shin shows up to defend her friend. The girl tries to cover his eyes to prevent him from accidentally bumping into the messenger, but the demon calmly removes her hands and pushes her friend behind her back. There's a mute dialogue between the rivals, and finally Kim Shin announces that the angel of death can't take the girl, he has no right to take the demon's bride. The angel leaves, and Kim Shin's mood changes, he tells his friend again that the whole legend is a fabrication, and there's nothing in it that the demon would like. The guy tries to explain that it's not about character or beauty, for about a thousand years he's been looking for the one person who will see something special in him that only a demon bride can see. Ian Tak promises never to call her mate again and assures him that she doesn't care for him at all, it was all nothing more than curiosity. Back home, Kim Shin admits to the angel of death that the girl can't see the sword, but that doesn't mean he can take her away. For the next few days, the pair try not to see each other, but the girl keeps remembering the demon's cruel words that she never was and never will be his bride. To permanently erase him from her memory, Yun Tak hides a maple leaf in one of the library books and shelves the book. The demon becomes depressed. Even thunderclouds appear in his house and the angel of death, along with his buddy's nephew, try to help him somehow. The nephew pesters the demon so much with advice that he ends up tying the guy up and leaving him in custody. Yun Tak moves to live at work so that the angel of death loses track of her again. Lying in bed at night, the girl recalls a strange ghost outside the school who called her a demon, and to find out the truth, Yun Tak sets out to find her.
the ghostly spirits tell the school drill the story of her mother that happened in the wasteland and how the demon brought her back to life. Kim Shin watches the women's conversation from the sidelines and hears her friend confess that she feels guilty. Aunt Yun Tak comes to the cafe and complains to the hostess that she misses her niece very much. The boss manages to chase away the lady, who is already being waited on by her creditors at the entrance. When the gangsters find out that the debtor's young cousin has the money, they catch the girl and push her into the car. Ian Tak can't get the money and she tries her best to summon the demon. She succeeds and Kim Shin comes to the girl's aid together with the Angel of Death.